Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 as Scotland. Now we have two main goals for this episode. The first one is, of course, to complete our spaceport by optimizing as much production as we can get in our capital. That's going to involve a lot of things. First of all, we're going to want to get as many traders into our capital and promote Pingala with the um, Space Initiative program once we finish the spaceport. We also just generally want to optimize our empire for more food so that our cities can hit that all-important 15 population number and uh, start generating a ton of science because we need to get as much science as possible to hit the end of the tech tree as quickly as possible as well. We are generating enough uh, technology points to be able to just skyrocket through this and also we want to be getting as many great people points towards engineers and great scientists to be able to get the late game engineers that boost space race that boost space race projects. Selkirk is a city with pretty good growth, um, but it may actually need a food market to hit that 15 population uh, cap. It has a plus four campus, so it's already getting to 50% science. So I do think that a, um, a food market in here makes sense. It'll take nine turns to build, but it will give the city an extra six food per turn, which should make it much easier to hit that 15 population cap. Dundee, on the other hand, already has an absolutely insane food surplus thanks to its really, really strong tiles. Its food surplus is in the realm of 21 per turn. So in this city, we'd be better off working on things like maybe grabbing an archaeological museum so that we can get that little bit of extra culture, maybe extract a few artifacts that are on my tiles to get a little bit more culture and squeeze our way up the culture tree to get some of the late game cards that we want. Like, for example, grabbing capitalism for shopping malls, ideology for more spies, getting a democracy for a better government and professional sports for the Estadia de Maracanã. I'm loving just how much gold I have too, because it means I can just purchase builders without having to actually spend time, uh, you know, building them and getting them up and running that way. Right, there's electricity, which gives us access to the oil power plant. We may want to get an oil power plant or two um, inside our empire, but not right now. Now, Roxborough is another city with a really, really good food surplus, but I'm tempted to get a food market in here to continue to push that food surplus up. But I also think that things like a seaport and shipyard in here would be really, really good because this city doesn't have a whole lot of workable tiles outside the Petra Hills that it has. So we're probably going to have to work a lot of this coastline once we start getting this city up to a higher population. And that's going to mean things like getting the water park. Um, so I think a, ship, a shipyard and seaport in here makes sense. And then also a food market. Ayer has finished it's a shipyard in, or shipyard in here, which means we want to get the seaport. This is to give it a little bit more gold from working these very, very nice uh, mausoleum coastal tiles. Um, I'll also want a builder in here. I may also consider moving Liang up here to get some fisheries and stuff like that. Montrose has a massive food surplus, so it almost certainly doesn't need the food market, but I will grab the research lab in here for that extra tech boost because I think I only have another nine turns on the 100% production towards campus buildings. So I think that's going to be a priority for me to get these last two, um, these last two research labs online, especially because they're going to be powered by our electrical grid. So they'll pretty much produce double science. Now we want to organize our trade routes by production in our capital and just start mass trading with India. This is going to give us a huge amount of science here, but it's also going to give us a ton of food and production to allow us to continue to skyrocket the capital's, uh, you know, population and productivity. And in fact, putting all these trade routes in place has shaved off nearly six turns of our spaceport, which is a huge amount considering how expensive the spaceport is. Our first commercial hub investment has finished, which has pumped us up just a little bit behind Congo. We made 80 great merchant points last turn. Um, we still have a couple more of these commercial hub investments to finish off. I have enough envoys now to consider getting suzerainty of other city-states. I'm going to put one into Nazca for that plus one fate. That'll shave a few turns off how long it'll take us to get our next um, national parks. And I feel like it would be nice to get suzerainty of Mitla as well because they would give me 15% city, uh, city growth rate in cities with campuses. And basically every single one of my cities have campuses and I already want a ton of population. Lovely. In Montrose, we've hit the plus five amenity uh, milestone here, which means we're getting a 30% uh, production boost, a 20% amenity boost, a 60% um, science boost, 
as well as a 20% culture boost. So this city is just producing insane amounts. Uh, we're also even getting a 20% amenity boost on our food. So this city should hit 15 population incredibly quickly. There is computers giving us access to the flood barrier. Let's go across our empire now. And everywhere that we can build flood barriers, I'm going to prioritize them. Uh, getting those online really early is going to be super important to protect my coastline from actually being damaged. Of course, certain cities it's not going to matter so much in. For example, there's a couple of cities that are coastal, but they're really, really young cities. So um, flood barriers aren't going to do much to protect them. And I honestly don't have that many tiles that are vulnerable to flooding anyway. But now is the time to get to work on satellites and nanotechnology so that we have our space race projects ready to uh, push out. I mean, fortunately, we didn't actually find any uranium inside my empire, um, which is kind of unfortunate because I can only see five copies on the map and none of them are anywhere near my borders. I almost did settle Cullen on some, uh, you know, some uranium. And I am tempted now in air to grab myself another settler, specifically just for the strategic resource grab up here in the Northwest. We now have Robert Goddard, perfect. That's a 20% production boost towards space race projects. And we'll be able to use him twice, um, which is gonna be incredibly valuable. So we're actually gonna get 40% towards our space race projects, which is why I'm kind of okay with my space port taking a little bit longer to build than say in other games. Now I have the shipyard in Roxborough, Let's grab the seaport and the food market in here to continue to push this city's population up. This city has been suffering from low population for a long time and all this late game food is gonna make a big difference. It currently does have a 15 food surplus, but I wanna push that as high as possible. Finally, the retainer's card has gone. So we've just lost about one amenity per city. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it would be nice to have, you know, some sort of alternative source of amenities. I think the best thing I can maybe plug in here is either logistics to let my builders move around more efficiently or conscription to save me a little bit of cash. I think I'll go for logistics because I have plenty of cash in the bank and also plenty of income. I could also buy Helena Rubenstein now, but I think I'll wait the three turns for this commercial hub investment to finish and then buy her. I also have another governor promotion. I'm going to pop this one into Pingala for space initiative. And then next era, I'll be able to get Iwas, which gives me access to the occult research, which is a city project that gives you gold while active. And when completed, it gives you a bunch of great people points and science for every ley line in the city. And that's gonna be useful in certain cities, like for example, um, Roxborough, I believe has two ley lines. Wigtown has two ley lines. I think Iyer has a ley line. So pretty much anywhere I have a ley line, I'm gonna be running, running, running that project. Neighborhood completed in Haddington. This city has a ton of food already, so I don't need the food market. Instead, I would maybe like to work on other things that are quite productive. For example, I could get a really good industrial zone on the this tile over here. But I think in the meantime, I'm gonna work on a spaceport and then chop and then place the industrial zone in here. Um, I think Wigtown is another city where I want the food market. It's a low food city, it's settled in desert. So a food market, monument and zoo are gonna be the three things that I work in here to get the food, culture and amenities up in here. Lovely, there's satellites. We have access to solar farms now. Um, these are going to be helpful for dealing with any power supply issues I have. And in particular, they're nice for these desert cities. Uh, so I'll grab myself a builder over in Wigtown and slap down some solar panels on the flat desert. I don't remember if solar panels can be built in um, tundra. Yeah, it can be. So there's also flat tundra potential here if I don't want to put forests over there. Dumfries Industrial Zone doesn't have very good adjacency. Um, so I think I'll probably go for a oil power plant in here. Um, the question is, I don't think this city needs a food market because it has, it has 12 population and it's going to hit the 15 pop number pretty easily. So I'll probably wait until I'm going for shopping malls in here. Now Montrose is another city that's finished its campus. I would maybe like to get an entertainment complex in here to get the amenities up just a scooch. So I think I'll pop an entertainment complex down in here. It'll take about 12 turns to build. This is another city where I would maybe consider a coal power plant or an oil power plant, but I think the entertainment complex just has a lot of value here. So Persia is denouncing me, which might actually be in my favor if he declares war on someone and like actually captures a city. I really want to declare wars of liberation, but I just haven't been able to pull it off at all this game, which is like mildly upsetting because it's one of the bigger bonuses of the Civ. 
Oh, uh, apparently Lau Lautaro uh, killed Mahendra Daro. Um, that sucks, but there's nothing I can do about it. We built our first solar farm, get ourselves a little bit of era score. Continuing to steal money from Congo. I, I think I've stolen like maybe 10 to 15,000 gold off Congo at this point because I've just been consistently taking gold from them. That's why I have like 5,000 gold in the bank, which I'm going to be using to purchase any of these great people that I really, really want. I did miss out on cosmetics, but that's okay because I'm going to grab jeans now. And the Nobel Prize in Literature went and we got the um, we got the bronze tier, which is fine. So let's grab this great merchant who will give us another luxury. We'll pop him down in Edinburgh. And then we have just slightly more amenities. And I can also sell those jeans to the AI for high value. I think you have to wait a turn for the AI to properly register how valuable they are though. I'm tempted to skip Margaret Mead. However, a thousand culture and a thousand science is pretty good. It's like a turn of science, but like five turns of culture. I could basically power this entire city with a hydroelectric dam. And that would save me a fair bit of coal because I'm starting to use up an awful lot of coal. So I think I will go for the hydroelectric dam in Edinburgh just to save me on, on my power a little bit. We got the food market in Selkirk. This food, the city is starting to grow really rapidly. Let's grab the seaport for even more food and more gold on these coastal tiles that it's working. It would be good to get a builder in here as well. Be kind of missing out on some of these tiles that I need to get improved. There's synthetic materials, which gives me geothermal power plants, as well as extra gold in my camps and access to the biosphere. Um, one problem we have run into here is that Sweden has actually built the Estadia de Maracanha over in Jönköping. Now, I could do a really late game war to steal that wonder, because I'm pretty sure I could kill these two cities and then hold it with loyalty if I really wanted to. Um, I may just have to give up, though on the Estadio de Maracanha, and instead maybe go for something like the Amundsen Scott Research Center, which would give me 10% science and 10% production in all my cities. I was really hoping to get the Estadio de, Estadio de Maracanha because it's really, really good, plus two amenities in every city. But this is just a, a reality of a low culture, high science game that you're gonna get, get to those late game buildings really, really slow compared to a sieve that has a lot of culture. Now, I, I actually don't typically see the AI building that building, but I'm not too cut up about it or not too upset about it. It's, it's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll, we'll still make do without it. I just would have really liked it this game. Looks like we've got some barbarian artillery coming our way. So let's go ahead and upgrade this guy to a machine gun and see if he can fight that off. I'm also going to bring over this crossbowman and turn them into a machine gun as well. Because uh, this is a bunch of barbarian stuff coming from the north. I would also like to buy a settler in here to send to the north to capture all these strategics. I really want Nikola Tesla because I'd be able to get um, 12 range uh, factories and power plants. So I'm going to prioritize seeing if I can just squeeze out one or two quick uh, industrial zone logistics to try and bring the price of this down a little bit. Now they'll get it in about seven turns. So I'm only gonna have time to do one industrial zone logistic. And then after that one's finished, I'm probably just have to buy it. Although I might be able to get one out in Roxburgh as well. Yeah, I can, definitely. And if I can get two of those out, I think that'll make this cheap enough for me to purchase it with gold because I'm making a ton of gold. And if I could get Nikola Tesla, I'd be very happy. Lovely. We now have capitalism, which gives us access to laissez-faire as well as market economy, but most importantly, the shopping mall. I really want to get nuclear program for Science Foundation. I think I'm going to pick up uh, Suffrage first and then go for nuclear program. And on the way to Suffrage, I think I'm going to try to build four sewers. I also need to get three cores in my army for the boost to mobilization. So I'm just going to start combining uh, some of my field cannons together, as well as any crossbowmen I have lying around. And this is just to pick up um, that little bit of extra, a little bit of extra culture from that. I have four sewers on the way, which would be a, a nice boost towards democracy. I also have to deal with this artillery over here. Um, which shouldn't be too bad, considering how strong my units are. We have basically all of the um, space race techs, and now we just need to find, we need to dig for and find the, um, the last one. So let's go for nuclear fusion and robotics. Let's also pick up Margaret Mead. I am tempted to skip her because I feel like the next one will be a better great scientist, but I'm just going to go ahead and recruit her. And it would have been Mary Leakey, so I do feel like I made the right choice here because I don't actually have the stuff needed 
to take advantage of uh, Mary Leakey and a ton of great scientists people just went and now we're we're able to maybe push for Carl Sagan so I think I'm going to start prioritizing working um more more of those uh what you call them uh, campus research grants all right there's a lot of nonsense going on over here let's kind of step um can I safely fight this I don't think so actually so I think we'll just step back and hold position and let these guys come to me 1000 science and 1000 culture boosts us along through the tech and civic tree we have a ton of envoys sitting in the bank now let's grab muscat i think here or no i think i keep working on mitla because if i could get mitla as well i'd be in in supreme position right so we've got a bit of a problem let's kill you and you and we'll clear out these barbs to get this uranium. Let's grab the water park in Roxborough. It'll take me two turns and give me some amenities in this city. There's the boost for... Just got our third core, giving us the boost for mobilization. You got to pick up as much culture boost as you can if you're going for a low culture, high science game. Uh, which is, you know, pretty much what we've been doing from the start. We do have actually okay culture, but it's nowhere near where it needs to be to actually keep on par with our science. It's kind of honestly a bit surprising that we're researching modern era technologies. Right, we have another governor title. We will be heading into another, the next era, so I'm going to hold off on spending this governor title. I'll pop a Manny into Mitla for the extra two envoys. Otherwise, I'm just continuing to build up my food base and all my other stuff as well. This isn't going to be an Estadio building anymore. So I think you get teleported over to Cullen, and then Cullen will be getting to work on a... Um, campus after this entertainment complex ah i forgot to actually buy nikola tesla so i missed out on him that sucks but it's not the end of the world i forgot to click the buy button i had it available last turn i checked it and then forgot to click it because i'm a dumbass all right ferris wheel and aquarium are going to be really useful in roxborough for am amenities and then after we have those it's going to be just campus research grants all the way down i don't think we need a zoo in montrose but we do want to get shopping malls for those extra two amenities the world enters the atomic era. We are, of course, entering into a dark age. We did get the boost for suffrage. Um, and I think our best one here is to go for heartbeat of steam because we are still building a ton of industrial era and later buildings. Let's grab things like the shopping malls, wherever it makes sense. Um, I think scone, I wanted a food market, right? Yeah, I think I did. Let's put another governor title into the hermetic order. This will give us occult research. I actually don't know the specific mechanics of occult research, but it seems like it would be really, really powerful, depending on the city that you're running it in. It's super expensive, though, at like 1,200 production. And here it is. Our spaceport is about to finish. Lovely. There's the boost for space race. We can get rid of this pin now. I am going to want to maybe bring back some of my spies to defend this uh, spaceport, but we could be begin working on uh, launching the Earth satellite. And it'll only take eight turns, which is extremely quick water meal uh ferris wheel completed in roxborough let's get to work on the aquarium i got its archaeological museum let's get an archaeologist and those the archaeologist is mainly just to get our culture up just a little scooch towards the end of the game sell kirk on the other hand i think i have basically everything i want in here so i'm going to start doing uh, a couple of campus research grants in here um there is something to be said for going to you know down the uh encampment line but i think my best move now Although I never built my neighborhood in here. No, I did. And in fact, I have a fully built neighborhood because I got the food market in here, right? Yeah, I got the food market in here, right? So campus research grants it is. Mahenja Darrow has flipped to me through loyalty and I could keep this city or reject it. I'm tempted to reject it and then maybe use an army over here to uh, turn it into a city state again. So let's start moving troops down that direction. I'll need a little bit of artillery. And since I'm not using my gold for anything right now, I think it's safe to purchase that artillery. Lovely, there is ideology. A lot of these cards are gonna be useful. For example, I can now plug in the five-year plan card that'll give my campus and industrial zone adjacency double uh, their normal yields. That means I'm gonna have a significantly stronger production base I think I have basically everything I want to have built in Edinburgh. Do I go for another spaceport or do I pump for um, campus research grants? I think I get another spaceport in here and then use this as another way to boost along my, um, my final space race project. 
Alright, time to start hammering Mohenja Daro uh, with the goal of ideally liberating the city-state. We found seasteads, which could be a good use for our builders for extra housing and food, so I'll grab them for now and then start making our way up through just the general tech tree here. We got our aquarium in Roxborough. Do I need any more districts in here? I really don't think so. I have pretty much everything I want. Um, so I'm going to grab a spy to be able to defend my capital spaceport. And I think it's time for some of my spies to maybe come home. Uh, I have one in Dumfries. Let's go ahead and put him in the capital. If we look at our city status here, you can see a lot of my cities are content and not quite happy. We're still struggling to hit the amenities that we want to be hitting. But I should now have enough faith to get another naturalist over here in Wigtown, which is basically like getting another luxury resource. Let's get started on some occult research in Wigtown. Um, it'll take 28 turns, but I mean, that should be a pretty huge boost. Right, let's rocket artillery Mohanjadaro again, fortify my mechanized infantry. Uh, St. Andrews is going to want a golf course as well to give it extra amenities. And more or less, most of my decisions now are made. And a lot of it is just kind of waiting for decisions I've previously made to complete, like building a spaceport, like building all my shopping malls, all that sort of jazz. Right, so we launched the Earth satellite, which means we have completely revealed the entire map. And we can get a better idea of who we should maybe look to be allies with. And in fact, I may be able to declare a liberation war. Wait, but you own Thebes. I don't understand. You own Thebes? But what if I were to get... um. I guess I just don't really understand the liberation war. Is it like they have to be at war and have captured an occupying a city? Or that they have to own the city. Yeah, I guess the Liberation War thing just didn't work out this game. And I should probably just forget about it at this point. But with the Earth satellite launched, we can get to work on the moon landing. Food market and scone. I don't think we need any of this other stuff. It would be nice to get a workshop, but I, I can honestly, I can just purchase that stuff in here. And instead just do my campus research grants for the rest of the game to get as many great scientist points and science as, uh, you know, science per turn as possible. Right, there's Seastead, so I'll probably grab myself a couple of builders on the coastline. We also have Democracy now, which is a huge deal. It's going to be a really, really big upgrade for our capital in terms of trade route production. In terms of diplomatic policy cards, I'm going to keep Vissel Banken in. I kind of like the idea of putting in gunboat diplomacy here. Plus four influence per turn towards envoys. That would be pretty damn good. I'd be able to get more suzerainties. Raj is okay. I don't have that many suzerainties to make that super worth it. It's a very small amount of science. So yeah, I think gunboat diplomacy here is the right move. I think I do want to plug in New Deal now. Because most of my cities have at least three specialty districts. And those plus two amenities are going to be huge for me. Um, I really would like to plug in liberalism, but I didn't get any of the um, the things that boost um, how many, what you call them, how many cards I can have in my government. So I'll have to sacrifice public works. And at this point, honestly, I'm not even hard building my builders and I won't need this again until I'm in the super late game, at which point having really high positive amenities won't really help me all that much. I will be able to take out public transport soon once most of my cities have hit the 15 population limit because I don't need the food anymore. But that's my policy agenda set. We're almost at a thousand signs per turn and we have found the exoplanet expedition, which is perfect. Roxburgh is now fully built. We got the spy we needed so we could just spam out campus research grants so we get Carl Sagan a little bit quicker. Shopping mall done in Haddington. So the city has really, really great amenities. It's about to hit the 15 population. Probably should have... I think maybe hitting the 15 population thing, I could have pushed harder for that, space my cities out more and maybe built more farms. Because I do feel like, um, I, I do feel like that some of my cities were maybe a bit uh, excess to requirement. And I think I should have pushed more for food this game. Although this was kind of like my first attempt at tall in the new patch. So we are kind of learning how you're going to be playing tall. Uh, going into this patch. I definitely feel like you need to be hitting that 15 population uh, milestone a lot earlier to really take advantage of it because at this point I've already generated most of the science I already need this game so I could have just made do with high adjacency campuses. All right, let's bombard Mohenja Daro and then capture the city and then we will liberate it to Mohenja Daro. That will create them free and new and it will give us maxed out envoys in them as well, which is a significant amount of culture, as well as extra housing and stuff like that. Unfortunately, we did lose suzerainty of one of the city states because I believe they were captured. But now we're up to 1,100 science per turn from capturing another city state uh, with envoys and using the Kilwa boost. I definitely do feel like I have not enough growth. Um, 
for a tall game and I should maybe have prioritized growth a little bit earlier into the game. I think my, my growth expansion came a little bit late and it didn't really mean much. Shopping mall done in Montrose. Time for more campus research grants. Right, let's take out public transport now and then plug in Science Foundations, which is going to massively increase the amount of great scientist points we're getting per city. I think right now we're getting uh, roughly between four to six, and this will essentially double that to 10 to 12. So we did make 62 great scientist points this turn, and I don't think any campus research grants finished. Now that we have smart materials, we can kind of do whatever we want tech wise, and I think I'll just grab everything and then finish off with the final tech. Culture-wise, let's pick up professional sports for ski resorts. This is another way for us to get amenities, which takes advantage of all our civilization bonuses. All right, Mali has declared war on me again. Um, this time his army is pretty scary. I'll need, I'll, I'll need to, I have to build a uh, aerodrome here and get some airplanes to defend myself. I could also get a giant death robot, actually. Um, how much are they to purchase again? They're 5,000 gold, so I could buy one in a few turns. Launch the moon landing, giving us a massive 10,000 culture in a single turn, Sports which should finish a ton of these civics for us. Now, uh, we got a professional sports. So we're going to want to get some builders to do this sort of stuff. Let's get our stadiums online, all that sort of stuff. Uh, do I want Cold War? I think it will be nice to head towards like synthetic technocracy. So I think that's what I'll click on and I'll let the, the culture tree sort of figure that out itself. Although I do want Amuts and Scott first. We picked up uh, John Roebling that gives plus one amenity per use in the city. So I'm going to pump him into um, Sterling to get really, really high amenities here. All right, so we're killing off a ton of Mali's units. It requires a little bit of kind of maneuvering around, but I'm not, honestly, I'm not that scared of Mali right now. Let's use our gold up in Cullen because we're about to get the Amudsen Scott Research Center. So I'll use all of my gold up here to fully build the campus. And that way next turn, we could just straight away get to work on the Amudsen Scott Research Center and then use Gustav Eiffel, who's been sitting around for a very long time to instantly build it, get a 20% science and 10% production in all of our cities. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you that I'm making 124 great scientist points per turn. And that's more or less passive because I don't think many campus research grants finish this turn. In fact, next turn, a few of them are. I right, plus one amenity for my capital. Right, there is rapid deployment. That means it's time to get to work on the Amundsen Scott Research Center. And we should be able to build this really, really quickly. Even if I don't have the Wonder Production card plugged in, the fact that Gustav Eiffel is here and he pretty much built a, uh, a quarter of it in a single turn is going to be super helpful. All right, spaceport done in Edinburgh. I'm going to get to work on the Mars colony. That'll take about 11 turns in here. Um, that way I have time to build things like my Royal Society and my capital uh, for the final portion of the space race. Another amenity for the capital. Just trying to push as many amenities into here as possible. I am starting to get war weariness though, which is uh, causing me an issue. I don't remember how or when I got the city of Walatha. Did it flip to me and I accepted it? I don't, I don't remember this even happening. Whatever, I, I've got another city now. I... What? Got my aerodrome in Ire. I would like to purchase a biplane, ideally. And then once I get aluminum or aluminium, I will be able to upgrade that to a jet fighter. I have zero al aluminium in my territory. Wow. 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 Okay, great. Uh, I guess I'm just using biplanes. Up to plus eight amenities in Dumfries and plus six or more in a bunch of other cities which is really starting to show off the power of this amenity strategy. I mean, we're getting a 30% production boost in the city, which is better than Ruhr, in my opinion. One of my cards went obsolete, and I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh, does anyone remember what card I had here? I think the only thing I care about is like science amenities and space race stuff. Did liberalism go, um, did liberalism go obsolete? Is that what happened here? No, I still have liberalism plugged in. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what I had plugged into this city. I guess I will go for integrated space cell though. 
so that I can get that 15% production towards uh, space race projects. And since I am going to start pumping builders into my projects, I'll plug back in public works. There's globalization, which allows me to plug in e-commerce. E-commerce will be huge because it's plus two production for every trade route. And I have 10 of those in my capital. So that's technically 20 production in my capital, which will then get further multiplied. Um, International Space Agency is cool, but I don't think I need it. I think I can afford to get rid of liberalism since I have so many positive amenities and I'm going to be getting stadiums soon. It does mean that some of my cities will drop down be below like critical thresholds. Uh, I think though that we can make do without. I am running into a bit of a problem in that Mali has like super high power units running around out there. And I just do not have units that can compete with them. I'll need to maybe push some of my gold towards picking up... Um, an extra rocket artillery or something, which I might do in my capital right now, or at least in a turn or two when I have enough gold. I have another governor title. I could get a bit of error score about out of promoting Pingala, but I already have enough error score to sort of get me through this entire, you know, you know, time. I guess I'll pick up Reina and throw her down somewhere nice for extra amenities and stuff. I guess Roxburgh is a good place to put her. It'll get me a little bit of extra housing and amenities in here. We're getting seven food, nine production and 10 gold for every trade route, which is absolutely incredible. In fact, if we look at my capital's production right now, 76 of its production is coming from outgoing trade routes. And that's why I really like the democracy e-commerce build. Wow, look at the damage he just did to my capital city with this tank. Oh, Jesus Christ, we have to get rid of this thing. Right, I'm really worried about my capital getting taken out here. I need to get rid of as many of these units as possible, even burning my own tanks to make sure that they go away. Let's put a second charge into the Amundsen Scott Research Center, down to 24 turns. Mansa Musa is building a lot of tanks, so I'm going to start working on some... Uh, some modern AT here in some of my forward cities because I, I really do think it's necessary for me to be able to hold these guys off. Oh my god, what even hit my city? Oh, it's a jet bomber! Oh, Jesus Christ! No wonder my city's getting absolutely annihilated. There's a jet bomber hitting it. Where does he even have that jet no bomber friends. stationed? Oh, it looks like he has it over in, um, has it over in Kurusa. Right, well, I need biplanes yesterday. I need to get a biplane stationed in my capital and have it on air sweep or something. Gotta recruit some mobile SAMs as well to be able to do uh, air cover. Oh man, the vampire and jet bomber. My capital is about to fall actually. Uh, this is really bad. This is the worst I've ever seen things. What do I do here? I'm kind of at a loss. I'm gonna lose everything if I if I lose my capital. He'll take peace, but it'll cost me 361 gold for 30 turns. I think I could win in 30 turns. So giving up my entire economy to win the game seems like a real <laughs> fair deal. I was not expecting the jet bomber vampire combo to nearly obliterate my capital. Uh, so I gotta win real quick because my economy is now in the trash. Oh damn! It looks like uh, Stephanie Kwalek has already gone, so running great scientist projects doesn't make sense anymore. Well, yeah, no, it really doesn't, so I should probably just finish off whatever ones I have almost completed and then go do something else. Also need to watch out for the fact that Christina is winning a diplomatic victory, so I'm gonna run a couple of train athlete, athlete projects here to try to slow her down. Ah, uh, a spy pillaged one of my industrial zones, damn it. Let's keep working on future tech. That's going to give us plus five production towards all city projects every time we finish it. So every three turns, roughly speaking, we'll get a 5% boost to our city projects. <clears throat> Mars Colony has been launched, which is the third step out of the four steps to win the game. Now we just need to complete the Exoplanet Expedition, which will take 12 turns in Edinburgh, but I believe Sterling actually has a lot better production. So we can do that in six turns in here. And instead in Edinburgh... I need, I need to prevent her from winning this. It'd be really, really bad if she won this. But I don't think I can put enough production into this. So instead, maybe it's better if I just win faster and hope that she loses? Honestly, as awful as that sounds, it's my best move. Wait, did Science Foundation go obsolete? Wait, what's happening here? Why can't I plug in Science Foundation anymore? Don't I, don't I want this? It's not in my list. Um, what? 
Why is Science Foundation not on my list? Does anyone understand this? Uh, oh, all the scientists are gone. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Yep, 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 yep. I want to try to purchase a builder essentially every turn in Edinburgh to run it over to the spaceport as well. And I'm also massively investing into my defenses. There's optimization imperative. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the synthetic technocracy. I do lose a lot of production from this democracy uh, benefit, but I would get a 30% production boost towards these projects, which I think kind of makes up for that. And I get the plus three power in all cities. I think this is worth it. I don't actually know. Right, what the hell? We'll give it a go. We'll see if it's worth it. Oh yeah, I get to keep dem I, I actually get to keep democratic legacy. So let's pop out liberalism. We'll plug in democratic legacy. I, for I forgot that I, I thought it was the other one that you keep, but you actually get to keep democratic legacy. Um, and I think I'm pretty happy with this. Although maybe commercial hub and harbors could go. Although I am losing a ton of gold, so I think those are necessary because um, now making positive eight gold. And now, uh, if I refresh this city. Make it in the region of 70 or 65 production per turn and a lot of extra production towards projects. Oh yeah, we got to put down our ski resorts for extra amenities too. That's something I've been forgetting to do. Most of my cities have really high positive amenities, but there are a few r relatively low amenities that I need to get around to uh, throwing down things like the ski resorts. We're going to be the only person with the Exoplanet Expedition actually launched. Pretty much everyone else has like satellites done who's competing for a science victory. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we can win as long as Mansa Musa doesn't like murder me in my sleep over the next few turns. Right, we have launched the Exoplanet Expedition. We are now currently on our way to Mars or uh, Alpha Centauri or whatever it is. I mean to start doing terrestrial laser stations and stuff like that. I would really like to nab uh, Werner von Braun. So I'm going to quickly nab him for that 100% production towards space race projects. We'll plug him in in a turn or two. And since we have zero uh, aluminum, we're going to have to do a power based build here by building these terrestrial laser stations, which is going to be tough. It's going to be tough because my power consumption is going to get insane very quickly. Which might mean I might cancel this giant death robot and instead purchase myself a nuclear power plant in here. Just to be able to convert my uranium here into enough power for my empire. Let's start pushing builders into our projects to finish them a little bit sooner. And I've also got Winner Von Braun to use here as well to double the rate at which I build these things. Although it doesn't show up in this tooltip, which kind of upsets me. Currently traveling one light year per turn. We have traveled one out of 50 light years. We should be traveling three light years next turn. There's a terrestrial laser station and there's a terrestrial laser station. Let's do some more of those because again, my power consumption is just going to be getting out of control. Already the city is making 13 power or consuming 13 power. Uh, my capital city is uh, consuming nine. Werner Braun von Braun again, kaboom. And now I should be able to one turn these because I'm literally triple production towards them, right? And another like 40%. I don't know. I like, again, in my capital right now, I'm building a 600 production project in one turn. So that feels pretty good to me. Up to 180 raw production uh, before invisible modifiers. Gentle eruption. We're traveling three light years per turn. We launched another pair of stations. We've now traveled 10% of the way to Alpha Centauri, which is where I assume that we are heading. And we're now traveling at four per turn. We're making, I feel like we're making good progress here and that we're going to be able to pull this off. All right, there we go. We launched two more laser stations launched. And I think we are at six light years per turn. We traveled nine out of 50. That's pretty much what this episode boils down to now. Uh, now that we're at this stage, it's just like, how quickly can I complete these projects and how quickly will I win the game? Uh, a terrestrial laser station. I'm also going to feed a builder into this to hopefully bring that down to a single turn. We are in a new era, so we can kind of do some cool stuff. I'm in a golden age, so I could grab myself a, uh, a free giant death robot and then delete it for extra uranium if I felt like it. I know, I like the idea of getting a free, a free giant death robot uh, Buddy Idolized, that seems pretty cool. And I guess Sky and Stars is another good one. 
That way I have uh, really, really good units. And now my cities are, are pretty well defended thanks to the giant death robot. He also provides air cover, which is really, really cool. Stadium in Wigtown, the city is now churning out amenities. Uh, I have a much bigger military now, which should hopefully discourage Mansa Musa for, for, from coming after me again. I, ha I have a, a ton of like units stationed up. I have anti-air units. I have like Sam, mobile SAMs. I have missile cruisers. If he does decide to go to war with me, it will be much, much harder for him. All right, another terrestrial laser station and another terrestrial laser station. We're basically building one to two terrestrial laser stations per turn. Uh, we're traveling eight light years per turn. We've traveled 15 out of 50. So there's only a couple more turns until we get that well sought after and well earned victory screen, in my opinion. I have earned this victory screen. Can I build? No, not quite yet. I need a little bit more gold to get my nuclear power plant. I'm continuing to build things like AT crews. That's probably also a good idea just to have a few machine guns and mobile SAMs around and stuff like that. Because the only real threat to me at this point in the game is like some AI coming out of nowhere and just murdering me. Now these next two terrestrial laser stations should be the last two that actually matter. Like in terms of uh, speeding up how, how quickly I'm going to win the game. Because I'm already traveling uh, nine light years per turn. Uh, let me just refresh that. I'm, yeah, I'm traveling 10 light years per turn and I would have to get like another three to speed that up. So I should win in two turns regardless. So I think at this point, I'll just set another terrestrial laser station to go just for the sake of extra score. And then I'll just force end my turn twice and we should get the victory screen. Not a turn too soon because uh, Christina could very well be winning the World Games and the um, the World the the World Congress next uh, in the next little while, and then win herself a diplomatic victory. Like she is very very close. Um, if she's able to pick up any sort of um, extra diplomatic victory points before either of these things trigger, she could win pretty much instantly. I guess I'll also buy my uh, nuclear power plant for the sake of buying it, right? Because I, I just never had it this game. Oh yeah, I completely forgot to uh, retake Mitla. I hit, what, what What was my final science this game? Looks like it was about uh, so 1,200-ish, which isn't bad. I think I got a little bit higher when I was running campus research projects and stuff like that. I'm very, very happy with this game. Uh, this should be the windscreen though, because yep, we're traveling 11 light years per turn. We only need eight more to go, shift enter, and we should see ourselves a victory screen here. Here it comes. Or do I have to hit end turn again? I, I can never remember. I can never remember when you get the victory screen. Ah, there it is. Lovely. That's all she wrote, folks. We managed to get a science win when playing a relatively tall build. Let's check the most important graph in the game. Of course, we're talking about the total religious religions. Of course, we're talking about the total religions founded this game. It looks like four people, oh, maybe five people managed to found a religion this game, which is pretty interesting. Nobody went for that extremely powerful second religion. I also want to draw your attention to the player's science graph here. I really do think a proper tall build should not be waiting until this point in the game to skyrocket in science. I should have had way more science way earlier into the game and I think that was just me not playing tall correctly because I should be like maybe double this science at this point in the game and I think this is just me refining how I play tall so I'll probably do tall again in my next series. Also want to take a look at the error score chart you can see here I was lagging behind on error score man I was not doing well with error score this game I did not have very good ages but that's kind of what happens when you skip out on um when you skip out on what you call them you know those things the religions those things yeah when you skip your religion you know you, don't, you just don't get as many as many error score war is declared i don't think i declared that many wars this game but i definitely definitely participated in a lot of combats here and i didn't build too many wonders either about middle of the pack but i want to see number of combats right here yeah I, I i'm actually quite surprised how few combats i participated in this game because it looks like Congo got into a war around turn 200 and it just never stopped. I'm curious, who was losing units? Really? I lost 26 units? I lost nearly 50 units this game? I don't remember losing any of these units. I mean, I remember losing a few units, but I don't think it was like 50 plus. Did I really lose 50 units this game? Well, this is more like 40 something. Jesus Christ, I lost so many units. That, that's really, really bad on my part. 
But yeah, that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!